I'm Nick Fawkes, and in 1982, it was my privilege to command 4-2 Commando Royal Marines. I had agreed with the brigade commander an outline plan, which was um, basically to go right flanking uh, into the open plain below Mount Harriet, simply because the other two options were not worth considering. Um, and we arrived at that conclusion because in the time scale I'm talking about, the thing one had to do immediately was to patrol forward to gain information of enemy positions and you know where you might or might not go but also equally importantly it was to intimidate the enemy so a lot of those patrols are what i call fighting patrols which simply went out and rotted up the argentinians and got them to um, fire indiscriminately everywhere which is what they did obligingly and so we we achieved both aims pretty quickly and you could tell that they were scared of us because we could operate at night and they they definitely didn't like doing that finding a route took a lot of professional skill certainly a great deal of courage and sadly uh, to uh, serious casualties, but we we did eventually find a route, prove it, and were, that's the way we decided. To, I decided to send two companies down right flanking to come around the back of Harriet. Once the attack on Mount Harriet got going. I actually felt sorry for, for those uh, Argentinians. I mean, the amount of fire that was coming down was devastating. And demonstrated when we took so many prisoners so easily, and you could see a lot of them, they were young, you know, and they were absolutely demoralised, terrified. Most of the time I listened to this amazing dialogue, starting with... Uh, Peter Babington, the, the company commander of K Company, counting down how close they were g getting to the Argentine positions. And, you know, he kept saying 200 yards, no movement, 300 yards, no movement. And it, it was incredible because they were actually walking onto the position. Anyway, at 300 yards, he decided rightly to kick it off. And and then the battle began. I said back on the camera, I believe that these um, conscripted, fairly simple uh, Argentine soldiers will surrender if you let them. So let them, let them surrender because if you don't, you know, we will. And that's what happened. They fought to begin with, and then when they realized that. Uh, you know, things were not going their way. They uh, they legged it, and we let them. But we still took <laughs> 300 prisoners. You hear uh, sad things like, uh, um, uh, Corporal Sanso is down, which means he's probably dead, and, and that happened in the first two or three minutes of K Company's advance, and which was when Corporal Watts, who was a brilliant young... Marine who would have gone far, uh, he was killed. And you, I thought this is going to be all all the effort one had made to try and you know do this without having too many people killed. But actually, um, uh, that was really the worst of it. K Company took their their objective, the first part of Harriet, um, reasonably quickly. And speaking with 
Peter Babington on the radio, I, I, I got the feeling that, you know, once you got stuck into them, they weren't going to stay and fight for long. However, L Company wasn't quite so simple, and, and they had a more protracted battle, and, of course, they had further to go. Um, but once they were on top of the ridge, it was fait accompli, really. They made a last stand on Goat Ridge, and, and we had to then, we had to make a decision, was it going to be 4-5 Commander, or was it going to be us who, who dealt with this? And it was us, and that was done. It was dawn before we consolidated all our positions and everybody was absolutely wiped out um really really tired and of course you you have to be even though i didn't really seriously believe they would but in those circumstances after you've taken a position you are very vulnerable to counter-attack because people are sorting themselves out and saying, oh my goodness, you know, we've... Uh, and so we did a lot of consolidating and casavacking and resupply. Um, and we were there for two days, I think. At the end, we had uh, two people killed, which is two, two people too many. Um, but we had 26 wounded. And actually, out of those 26, 24 came back and served in the Royal Marines for as long as they wanted. When I needed a light helicopter, I, I usually got the same sergeant. And he was there uh, when the call came in. He said, well, I'll, I'll fly you to Government House. And I said, well, you don't need to fly me. I went, no, no, he said, I, I, it would be an, a fitting end, you know, to my war. So he flew me to Government House, to the lawns of Government House, where we had been told the O Group was. And when you get out of a helicopter like that, you've got your gun and your map case and all your stuff, you know. So <clears throat> it takes a bit of time to reorganise. So the helicopter flies off and I'm sort of getting my stuff together. And suddenly, out of the... Uh, the doors of Government House appears this mob of Argentines. They're all running towards me, shouting. And, you know, I remember thinking, well, after everything else, and actually, when they got there, they were all not greeting me, but they were saying, where do we, you know, what's happening? Will you tell us where we should surrender? So I thought, oh, gosh. <laughs> So I said to them, well, <clears throat> and then they said, where, where, where are your troops? And I said, well, they're just down the road. And fortunately, coming down the road was a, a patrol of paras. So I went down to them and said, uh, don't say anything, but I'm about to join you because this lot don't know that I'm on my own. So imperturbable para corporal said, oh, you're welcome, sir, or something. And we went off to government house. And that was where the surrender was being negotiated. Until we suddenly arrived and there were thousands, thousands of people, bands playing, and it was just amazing. And it was a, you know, I, I remember getting off the ship and looking back up at, you know, and all the units were sort of in there together and there was 4-2 up there and I thought, you guys really deserve this. Um, no, it was, it was a, a memory never to be forgotten. <laughs>